Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. This video will be the first part of our new upcoming tutorial series. In this series, we'll show you how to make architectural representations with SketchUp to Illustrator workflow, step by step. We'll cover all the essential drawings that an architect should produce, perspective scenes, plans, master plan, section, section perspective and elevation. In this video, we are going to represent a ground floor from start to end. We've preset the view for the ground plan. It is important to include the immediate environment in this drawing type. To export a 2D graphic, go to File, Export, and select a D graphic. Here, you can choose the export format. We'll go with a PDF file. It has an options window, but we'll leave it as it is. Click export and your PDF file will be ready. To import it into Illustrator, simply right click it and select open with Adobe Illustrator. Once it's transferred to your Illustrator workspace, you can edit the artboard size. We'll go with 70 by 60. To fit the drawing to artboard, select all and click the scale tool. We'll scale by 200. Now, we have these excess parts outside the artboard. To split them, draw a rectangle same size as the artboard. Select the rectangle and lines. Then click the Shape Builder tool from the toolbar. To split the lines, click on them while pressing the Alt key. Once they are separated, you can delete them. Our base is ready. Let's save it as an Illustrator file. Go to File, Save As. Choose the AI file format. Since we exported this drawing from a 3D model, there may be overlapping lines or lines that do not fully fit. We'll clean them quickly. There may be fractured looking lines as well. The easy way to fix them is to select all and choose round cap and round joint options from the stroke panel. In this way, your lines will look much smoother. These furniture drawings came with our 3D model. Let's open a new layer for them. Be sure to always work with layers. It makes your workflow very easy when you want to make changes in the drawing. You can move the selected items from one layer to another by dragging the little square icon. Grouping the furniture blocks is also very useful when you want to move them around. You can use Ctrl G or Command G for the shortcut. Using shortcuts definitely speeds up your workflow. We have also grouped the stairs so that we can edit them easily. In 2D export, only lines are imported, but we need surfaces to add color and patterns. One of the fastest ways to create surfaces is to use the Live Paint Bucket tool. But first, we create a new layer and copy the building and surroundings into this new layer. The original outline version remains on the previous layer, as a backup. Turn off the other layer's visibility by clicking the eye symbol, then select All. Go to Object, Live Paint, Make. Now you can use the Live Paint Bucket tool on your drawing. Select the color you want to apply with the eyedropper tool, and you can start coloring. To color more than one surface at a time, you can click and hold. We don't want to give a color anything yet, we'll just make surfaces. So we chose white. Once you've finished, you'll need to expand the Live Paint group, then ungroup the selection twice. This will allow you to edit these new surfaces. Now we can move our building to its own layer, just like we do with the furniture. First we'll group it and then place it on the layer we've used as a backup. Select and drag it to the middle layer. 
Now we can edit and transform our building. First, we'll add hatch to our walls by simply selecting the surfaces we've created and changing their color to blackish gray. You can skip this step and leave the walls blank. Since we're going for a monochromatic look, it'll add contrast and will emphasize the contour of our building. Then we'll complete the stairs. The projection of the stair is missing because we got it from the 3D drawing. We can draw quickly with the pen tool. Select the dashed line from stroke panel to indicate that it is imprinted from the upper floor. You can duplicate the line by dragging it while pressing Alt key. And to repeat the action, just press Command D. And don't forget to draw the direction arrow for the stairs. It is an architectural tradition at this point. We can move on to adding patterns to surfaces. Make sure to have pavement, cobblestone and grass patterns in your library. Simple linear patterns will do the trick. We have prepared a package of all the contents we used in this drawing. The link is in the description box below. You can use them or make your own patterns. We'll use a wood flooring pattern for the terrace. We didn't mention it at the beginning of the video, but throughout this series, we will prepare visuals for a local coffee shop project. The contents we add will also be related to this concept. We'll color the interior floors and stairs light gray. Now we can work on our furniture layer. We'll add people and furniture blocks to further define the interior design and use of spaces. We'll start by placing the counter and build our way up from there. Since our interior space is on the small scale and the building program is limited to the coffee shop, we would like to use a lot of vector content to show the space in use. You can also only add a minimal number of furniture and plants and leave it as that, it's entirely up to you. We had grouped this furniture from the 3D model beforehand, now we can quickly adapt it to our furniture style. Again, it has only outlines, we'll need surfaces. Select the furniture, go to Object, Live Paint, Make. Then choose the color you want to apply. With eyedropper tool, click it triple times and done. Live paint colored all. The most time consuming yet enjoyable part of preparing an architectural illustration is deciding what to fill with and how to fill it. You can use vector contents to bring the space to life, emphasize the concept of the project and define the specific features of the environment. As we've mentioned in the beginning, including the immediate environment is a key aspect of ground floor plans. We will switch to our background layer and add patterns to the environment. We'll use the same flooring pattern for the river, but this time we'll rotate it. Right click to the pattern, go to transform and select rotate. Make sure the transform objects box is unchecked. Enter the angle and press OK. Then we'll scale it down to make it appear dense. Again, for the scale, make sure the transform objects box is unchecked to only scale the pattern. You can preview it while trying different percentage values. Zoom out frequently while drawing. This way you can manipulate how your visual will look on small screens or from afar. We'll draw pattern surfaces with the pencil tool. Again, we adjust the scales. Don't make them too small so that the details are visible to the viewers and delete the remaining parts with Shape Builder tool. Select both surfaces and click to the parts you want to delete while holding the Alt key. That easy. We think patterns look more natural on hand-drawn surfaces, and Pencil Tool is very useful for free hand drawing. You can go over the parts you don't like over and over again until you are okay with them. And the Shape Builder tool will be your best friend while drawing an illustrator. We'll repeat the same steps, draw, scale and subtract the patterns. We decided to give the roofs of the surrounding buildings a light gray color as well. But when we zoomed out, our project was not very noticeable among all the patterns. So we leave the interior white. This way, the contrast we created with the hatch is strengthened. Now let's illustrate the river. This will be the attraction point of our project, its proximity and relation with the nearby river. Make sure you have some specific aspects to highlight in your architectural representations. We will use fishing people vectors, water plants, fish, and boats. Do not forget to add details like this related to your project. 
One benefit of using vector content is that you can easily select and divide parts from within. For example, we can take a group from this lotus drawing and place it in different parts of the river. Be creative. Make your own touches to the vectors. They are fully editable. For example, these lines are looking dense from afar. Double click it to isolate the group. Then you can delete them. And you can draw smoother lines with the pencil tool by adjusting its fidelity. Then, we add lines to the entire river to give it a water effect. We'll add some stone drawings on the bank of the river. And under the deck as well. Even if you are not adding anything, you should definitely add tree blocks to your project. Architecture stands out when it is intertwined with nature. Now we can go on and add street fillers. The last elements we will add to this drawing are the plan symbols. You'll need north sign, entrance arrow, elevation symbol and the section lines. Place the north sign outside of your project, but it must be somewhere legible. While adding the elevations, start by the outside of your building. You must enter the floor heights on it. Keep adding level indications by placing them on the same plane. You can also add elevation indicators to the places in relation to your building. For example, you can specify the height difference with the river. Lastly, add the section lines. These lines indicate the placement of section planes we'll use in the upcoming tutorials in this series. Make sure it cuts across your building, don't leave it short. Generally, you'll need one horizontal and one vertical section in small-scale projects like this. And this is the finished ground plan illustration. Adding architectural symbols made it look a lot more technical, right? Let's take a closer look at the details. Our last step is exporting. Go to File, Export, Export As. Select the file type you want to export as. We'll go with JPEG. Don't forget to select Use Artboards. Adjust the resolution and quality preferences. Click OK and it'll export. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you liked it. Is there a type of architectural drawing you would like us to add to the series? Don't forget to share it with us in the comments. Until next time.